Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mount Carmel Area High School Red Tornado Football, the Pennsylvania Eastern Championship from Camp Memorial Stadium, the Red Tornadoes against the Marion Catholic Colts. I'm Bob Else along with Warren Altimore and Wayne Brokenshire. This is it, the big one in the East, the final, and it's the Red Tornadoes against the Marion Catholic Colts. Absolutely, folks, against an old, old rival here. There's no love lost between these two teams. Of course, every year we run down the, the rivalry. Of course, uh, Coach uh, Connolly coming from the Marion uh, uh, program over in the past years. And, 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 and well, we, we can, I guess we can go through this. Yeah, we're professionals now, right? <laughs> but coming from uh, 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 Marion Cole program for many, many years. And, of course, we know that he knows everybody over there. Uh, we're as familiar with the Marion Colts as we can possibly get over a period of time. So unlike many other Eastern Finals, like unlike any other Eastern Final where you're actually meeting a team that you've seen. games in a row they've won and they've with the new and improved as they call it team uh DeCosti, the quarterback is is uh the coach's son he right. starts as a sophomore at quarterback and the barrasso who was the uh who was the end is now is now playing tailback right. so yeah, uh, they, they that's what we're going to look at tonight and we see some people on the line in fact there was a late scratch on the line tonight at the uh, guard position, Zane Ryder is now starting at guard and was introduced as the starting guard in the pregame introduction. So we're not sure what caused that or what the reason is, but he'll be starting in place of Piracini. So uh, there has been some major changes with the Colts since we last saw them. Of course, we played them up there in, on a Saturday afternoon. The score was 28-zip, uh, Mount Carmel area. But, and of course, everybody's talking about a rematch, and, and there's 10,000 angles, Wayne, on whether you want to oh, play a team you know or you don't. You know, it, there's well, a lot of ways to look at it. You know, you, you take a look at last week uh, playing Wyoming area, uh, touted as one of the best teams coming out of the uh, Wilkes-Barre Scranton area, coming down and, and Mount Carmel handling very well. Uh, also, then you take a look at playing Marion uh, on October 10th and, and beating them 28 nothing. Now, you know, it. To me, it would take some uh, doing to mentally get ready for this game. Coming off a big win from somebody, playing someone else that you, you've already beaten uh, by four touchdowns, it's, it's got to be difficult. I think so. I definitely do. Although the only thing I saw this week in talking to the guys is that they know it's the Eastern Final. Oh. And uh, that that's the secret. The difference in this game of playing Marion to playing them the sixth game of the week of, of the season is that they know where they're going with this one. Well, I mean, and I think we got, we need to, the one thing we need to look at a little bit here is, is they're saying that Mount, they're, they're, of course, that Marion has improved over the last six games, but you know, I think Mount Carmel area has improved oh. over the last six <laughs> games also. It's not like we stood still. Right. You know, I think we've honed our skills and we can tell <laughs> offensively at least that, that we have come full full circle from the beginning of the season and now are, are just about the most potent offense in, in the entire state. Kicks away and this Eastern final started in the direction of Veach, bounces on the 18 yard line, takes it back to the middle of the field and gets to the 34 first down and 10 red tornadoes. The Colts will come out on defense. We have uh, the man down, 65. Uh, Brown is down, but he's getting up. Uh, Marion will come out, and, and they're going to play what will look like a 4-4 defense. It, at least it, it, it's a base 4-4 defense. But what we've seen over the many years of playing them is that 
it's, it's got a lot of hybrids to it. It changes right. around a lot. They do a lot of different things according to the different lineups that we'll present them on offense. So, and there you see the shift right there. Give it to Bailey. Finds a hole. First down. Red Tornado to the 46-yard line. But see, well, the, the only thing there, Warren, when, when you're doing that, is, is you're, you're not getting ready to... Uh, take on a blocker. Now, now what you saw there was you got the middle linebacker coming up and, and jumping right into the nose guard position right before the snap of the ball. And and to me, you're not getting yourself set and ready to take some type of a blocker on. Now they're in a 50 defense. Out of the eye, the red tornadoes go. Give it to Veach, same hole. Lots of running room, takes it down the sideline to the 42, another first down. Tackle made by number three from the uh, Matt Leitzel. He was the starting quarterback, but a, another 10-yard gain for the Red Tornadoes. Well, I'll tell you what. Oh, you... Leitzel's two. Okay, Matura is two, and they, Leitzel's number three. We got it. If you really want to watch some line play, you know, it, it, I know everybody watches the halfbacks, the quarterbacks, the you know, the wide receivers. Watch the line play if you want to really enjoy a football game. That time, Mike Sinkovich putting a crushing block on the tackle on the cross block. Out of the split back formation, Bailey goes in motion. Sebus is going to keep the ball, finds a hole, powers down to the 34-yard line, about a six-yard gain, and the Red Tornadoes putting it on the ground and just driving. Yeah, nothing fancy to open the game for Big Red. This is power football. Most of the plays have been between the two tackles. That was the only attempt at moving outside, and even that was designed to go off the outside end of the tackle the way it was designed. So Mount Carmel area, again, again when we felt this last week, was quite content to play smash mouth football and, and, and just take control of the football game on the ground, racking up last week more yards than we thought possible on the ground. They're going with the cheater backs, Veach behind the cheater backs, and they read that one very well. Good read by Marion Colts, and what they do is they stuck, they pile it up over there, Wayne, but it's a good play for Coach Williams to come back to the other side. Oh, definitely, it, and, and even that play, you know, you start uh, putting your defense over there to the to the power on that uh, those cheater backs, and and it doesn't take much for Veach to find a crack, a, a little seam in, that, in the blocking scheme, and he's off to the races. Third down and one yard to go for the Red Tornadoes. They're going to go out of the I formation. Try Veach off the right side. Finds a lot of room to the outside. First down and more to about the 23-yard line. And right at the moment, I mean, it looks like the Colts are a little bit off balance. Not exactly sure where we're coming from. And again, that, that's a function of, of watching last week where you see three backs in the backfield run for over 100 yards. So now the, now the, the task at hand for Coach Tukofsky and his group is, who do we defend? You know, what, what do we do? What do we look for? Who do we keep? And, and it's really hard to do that now. And, and I think you're seeing us, we're, we're running the middle, uh, yet we have not even made a real attempt at the outside. That play wasn't designed outside, but went there, so. Oh, right, tried one right up the middle there. Big hit made by number 74, and we'll call his name a lot. No, that was Kent Smith. 74, the uh, right tackle. That was a nice play by the by the Colts that time. We used Veach as, as a decoy, and uh, it was supposed to be a pitch out to him wide, and we were hoping to draw that linebacker. But, and then what you do is you pitch a real quick inside pitch to Bailey cutting down the middle, but the, the Colts read that really well and stopped Bailey for about a yard of that. Mike Smith split left, Paracella split right. Sebus back to pass, big rush. Sebus tucks the ball away and gets only about a one-yard gain. Big rush from the left side of the Marion defense, and they did that before. They know they're going to come from that left end. That left defensive end will come in there, Wayne. Well, in fact, I think the tackle, the left end and the tackle got through that time. Sebus did not have any, any time to set up and even look downfield. Big third and 11 now on, on this drive as they've uh, got their first real test of the evening. 8.40 left in the first quarter. Sebas back to pass, looks in the middle and he has to run with the ball and he's tackled by number 33 Ott and number 71 Horvath. Paracella open down the middle though, or Bailey it was. I think it was Al Bailey. So I think we'll see that play again, yeah, guys. Back. Of course, Mount Carmel area, the ball is going to be sitting right at the 30-yard line of the Colts. We expect and we will see Mount Carmel area go for it here. I don't. Think, I think it's a little bit too far to talk field goal right now for some COVID. So I think you're going to see us run a fourth down play here and try to pick up the yardage. And now we need 15 yards for the first down. 
So the Colts have, have stiffened up a little bit here as we got closer to their goal line. Oh, we're going to go out of the shotgun formation. Bailey stays back as the lone back. Has to watch the rush from the right side of the Red Tornado line. Sebas throws it. Hits Van Doren, first down, Red Tornadoes at the nine yard line. Great job by Sebus to hustle there and, and get ben, out, but there was time for a while. He waited yeah. for Van Doren to get open. He had good protection and, and it broke down a little bit. And you saw his speed and what you saw there, and, and you don't want to miss out on this, was Van Doren right. did not give up. Van Doren saw the problem, saw that his quarterback was running to his right. Van Doren broke his route and turned back to the right sideline, waved the hand up, said, I think I'm free, and boom, a big pass play. And uh, that's what you need. I mean, that's communication between a receiver and a quarterback that, that takes time to develop. Power eye formation for the Red Tornadoes. Give it to Veach behind the power. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Down to the two-yard line. Yeah, Big Red's being pretty methodical right now. I mean, uh, and again, you see, you see a real, I guess, and I guess the only way to call is an offensive confidence out here. I mean, they just feel that that they're going to move the ball right now on anybody, and and at the moment they've got the the Colts a little bit rocked on their heels, and, and they're down at the two yard line. So, it's a great way to open up a, an Eastern Championship, guys. Now you look at Terry Meyer come in, and you're going to have Meyer and Zinkovich at the fullback position with uh, Veach at the tailback. Quarterback sneak. Got to be close. He's Touchdown, in. Red Tornadoes. He's in. Boy, that would have been weird not to make one behind the bus, but it was close. He yeah. got in there, though. No, Touchdown, there. Red Tornadoes. Now, you need two yards. That's a pretty much of a getting with the All-State center, that's for sure. And the key there was that... Uh, I guess we took Bailey out and we put uh, Terry Meyer in. And we know that when we put Terry Meyer in, we're, we're looking to power to the right. Yeah. And uh, in this case, here we run a uh, quarterback sneak through to the left side. Sinkovich in to attempt the extra point. Snaps back from Els to Paracella. It's down. The kick's up. And, and he's it's done good. It. He's done it, ladies and gentlemen. That's it, right? Yep. Yes, it he's is. He's broke the record, folks. There it is. Wayne, you can your you record. comment on that one, pal. <laughs> Congratulations to Michael. I'll tell you what. Uh, if anybody deserves it, he certainly does. Of all the things that he's done over the last uh, four years of playing football here at, uh, for the Tornadoes, uh, you know, my hat off to him. And what record he broke is Wayne's record of 45. 45. He now in has in a regular 46. Season, right, has in a right. 46, right. Well, an impressive start for the Red Tornadoes offensively, guys. Made 45. Right. So that's a 46, 46 one, one right. out of 53 attempts. And we, he got so close to it uh, two, years two years ago. Two years ago. And, yeah. and uh, right at the state championship game, wasn't able to get an extra point up and, and didn't get it. But uh, good to see Mike Cinco. He certainly deserves a win. No, oh, definitely. You know, no disrespect know, I, to you I on mean, that there's, one. But. There's uh, you know, a record that has been there for 28 years. You know, so, and Michael came so close two years ago uh, down at the States, down at the finals. That was a 65 yard drive in five and a half minutes. Good time control on the clock Excellent. by the Red Tornadoes. Mike Sinkovich with a booming kick taken at about the 11 yard line by Leitzel. Oh, no. And a nice hit by 27, Matt Van Doren. That was a nice hit that Wasn't time it? on, on the, the, is that the quarterback there? He did, with the old quarterback. The old quarterback. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, that was no, Justin Barrasso, Barrasso, the I'm tailback. That's what Sorry, excuse me there when you said the quarterback. Sorry, guys. He's a Barrasso. He'll line up at the tailback, tailback in right. their eye formation uh, on offense. And again, you're going to see a lot of sets out of them as we had seen before. And of course, Dacosti's the guy we don't know, the new quarterback. Uh, we haven't seen him play this year yet. So, going to try Barrasso up the middle, gain of about maybe a yard. And I think you, you look back at last week's game, and of course you can look at the season because, and I think if you look at the season, the thing that stands out, net yards rushing against Mount Carmel area over a period of these 13 games is uh, uh, 578 yards. <laughs> yeah. Last week, if you remember, Wyoming area at halftime, Wyoming area was down uh, minus 32 yards, I believe, and at one point we're down to minus 50. Go out of the split backs. Back to pass. Ooh. Dacosti still on his feet and has to run out of bounds after no gain. Little shot from number two, Nick Chesney. Well, number 80 was, was after he missed him and turned back, he was pretty much tackled as he made the, the turn there to, yeah. to take but, the quarterback and, and down. And I'll tell you what, Cuffey almost tackled him the second time. 
crowd in front of us a little bit uh, angry. They thought it was an unsportsmanlike penalty there, but the referees didn't see it that way. Well, I guess so. Well, I think Nick Chesney was pulling up. He actually, yeah. If he wanted to nail him, he could have nailed him into the fence. He just gave him a little bump. Yeah, we talked about that last week again at Shimokan area here. That's a short sideline here on the visiting side, so there's not a lot of room between the end line and the fence. Third down, nine yards to go. DeCosti, back to pass. Screen pass to the middle and dropped. He heard <laughs> footsteps. I guarantee you, number eight was there to receive it. But uh, he, the dog. He, he heard, heard some barking. Definite <laughs> footsteps. That's not footsteps. That was barking. <laughs> That time, Evans absolutely saw right away that, that it was a screen pass. And we had read the screen pass so well last week. Yeah. And uh, he turned immediately and went back to where the ball was. And, and the receiver actually short-armed a little bit, didn't get all the way out to get it because he saw Evans on an on a, on attack mode there. So You know what, guys? They didn't give us a number eight for Marion, so we're not sure who number eight is. In punt formation uh, is number three, Matt Leitzel. Snaps back. Kicks away. Big kick. Taken by Veach on the 39. No, it's Paracella uh, on the 39-yard line and breaks it up the field to the 44. First down and 10, Red Tornado. I'll tell you what, very, very good play by Paracella there. Paracella was on the move, cutting back towards the goal line, back to about the 30-yard line, and caught that ball as it was tailing away from him. That was a, a very strange punt. It did turn over real quick, and in its spiral has a tendency to curve a little bit. And uh, instead of Paracel letting it get over his shoulder and hit the ground, he picked it up and gained another 10, 15 yards. We have a we, we, timeout there, guys. It's uh, an official timeout. Paracel is hurt. He's Paracel, down. He got off the he got off to the sideline there, but he's so close to the end line, they're going to hold up play until uh, the trainers and, of course, Doc Greco over there can uh, make the decision to move him back to the bench. He, he, he hurt his leg is what it looked like when he got, tried to get up. But he's right on the end line there, so they're not going not gonna to do a play here. And I'll tell you what, it would give us a give us a minute here to say hello to a special fan. Of course, last week we talked, but we saw at halftime one of our fans uh, had fallen ill at, at the halftime. Of course, it, it was Al Yurkevich. And those of you who know Al, you know what a rabid Mount Carmel area fan he is. And he, he and his daughter, I, I know, miss no games, and they're everywhere. And uh, I, I understand that when he went down over there at halftime, the only reason he allowed them to take him to the hospital was that we had such a comfortable lead he felt he could go there. But, uh, <laughs> We just want to say hello and get well soon to Al because we know he is an absolute great Mount Carmel fan. So, Al, take care, pal, and maybe we'll see you at Hershey. Yeah, they're still working on Paracel. He's not getting up. It looked like maybe an ankle or a knee just got pulled. They had him. That's how he tackled him. He tackled him by mm -hmm. the ankle. Mm -hmm. Of course, now, losing Paracel would be, would be a pretty big hit for Mount Carmel. He is the leading receiver on the team right now and in the past six games or so has really come into yes. his own and uh, he's the kind of guy you do not want to lose. Paracella and also, uh, has, you know, has uh, I'm looking at his, uh, had 65, 31, uh, 31 catches I guess. Try Bailey up the middle, oh. finds a big hole, breaks it back to the center of the field and he's down to the 20 yard line. First down, Red Tornadoes, a 20 yard pickup by Al Bailey. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> great run by Al. Al got the ball. It looked like a delayed a delayed draw, actually. He just waited long enough and, and shuffle stepped a little bit behind the blocking until it opened up completely, and then he just took off. I tell you how many passes you have, but I'm having trouble reading Jose's uh, breakdown here. I'm not sure what he's telling me on this one, but he's by far the leading uh, pass catcher. Out of the eye. Gives it to Veach. Tries it off that right side again, has to break it outside, and tackled out of bounds for about maybe a three-yard loss. And he went down because something happened. Now, something happened with him right at the side. You guys see the way he turned yeah. at the sideline? Before he was hit, something happened with Veach. And he's now down on the sideline also. And I couldn't tell what happened to him, but whatever it was, he did it before he got the hit. It was only, I mean, he was already hurt before he went down. Well, it looked, it looked about in the first series of downs as we were going we were down about the 30, 25 yard line. It looked like something had happened to uh, to Johnson there. He got back up though. He's, yeah, he's up. He's up and walking it's, over. It looks like, like, it like sometimes you do something funny when you turn. It almost looked like that to him because he almost stopped dead right at the sideline and then didn't go upfield any further. So hopefully this is this is not going to be a a game ending injury. And he's standing up there like he's ready to go back in. So that's good news. We're still looking at uh, Paracelo though. He is still on the bench being attended to by Doc Greco. Bailey goes a tailback with Sinkovich and Meyer at the fullback positions. 
Gives it to Bailey. Behind the jumps over people down to about the 15 yard line. Nice job by Al Bailey. He saw a pile in front of him and he jumped over everybody. I tell you what, you take a look at two series now and we've run the ball basically to the right, right, right off guard tackle. Every play, we're, we're just daring them to stop us. I think, I'll be absolutely true to you though, I think in the last four games, Al Bailey has has, has just come oh. to, the, to the fact to the point where he's dominating the, the, the offensive game right now. 4.59 left in the first. This one goes to Bailey. They tried to take him outside, and that's for about a two-yard loss. 32 that time was, was the guy that made the nice play, and I don't see him on the defensive. Have to look over 32 here, here is uh, Derek Varner. He's been putting different people in. We're yeah. seeing a, a lot of people being put in, and they're going on fourth down and eight yards to go again. Nick Chesney now into the offensive lineup for the Red Tornadoes. Usually a load formation, Wayne, where they'll spread out four receivers. Well, and that's what you want to do. You want to spread this defense out. They, they take wide gaps to begin with, and by spreading out people out, you're picking up some lanes there automatically. Red Tornadoes had to call timeout right here. Exactly think, four minutes left here. I think Mike's coming in, in the first quarter. Try a field goal. Yeah, I think this is a field goal attempt. Yep, they may be close enough here. They're, I think that's what they were trying to gauge whether they were or not, and they needed to call a timeout then when they decided that it was. The yeah, good, that's what they're doing, changing shoes. In the good news department, Paracel is at least out walking around now. He has a limp. He's limping, but he's walking. He's off the bench. And they're icing what well, looks like his knee from over yeah. there. It's a long way to look there, but I think his knee is what they're they're looking at. So hopefully we'll see him later on in the game. Although, uh, you know, you talk about offense, you know, to be a tough loss there, but also yeah. defense. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to lose him, especially the way he's been playing. He's really come on so strong uh, at the end of the season that uh, he's going to be a big loss if he doesn't come back in the game. And right now we're going to look at the sink man lineup for a field goal. How big is it? 34 oh, yards. 34 yards. How big is it? That was a pretty good one, huh? <laughs> the holder is Chesney. Snaps back. It's down. The kick's up. And it's good. We got it. It was big, guys. I was right. With 3.54 left in the first quarter, the score, the Red Tornadoes 10, the Colts nothing. That's, I'll tell you what. Now you have, you have a different holder coming in there, and that does. Good job you know, by, Chesney by Chesney to hold it. Got the snap from Elson. Excellent. That, yep. I'll tell you what, you know, you know the best thing with Chesney is there's probably not a position out there he couldn't play if you told him to go in. You know, we talk so much about, about how, what the heads-up play he plays and how, and of course, his dad being the coach, and, and Coach Chesney's the kind of guy that, that, that when he tells you you want to learn it, you, mean, <laughs> you don't want to really not get, any, get anywhere on that one. So he's, well, he's grown up with him, so you know he's going to know what he's doing. But you feel pretty comfortable. I mean, sometimes you put a kid in new like that and you, and you hope for the best, but I think you put a Chesney in there and you know it's all right. There's no difference there because he'll handle it. Well, he's got to be more relaxed tonight. Now, if you, you go back two games now, he's picked up the key receiver because both teams come in with, with somebody that they've thrown to all the time. Tonight, Marion doesn't come in with that. So I think he might be a little bit more relaxed and be able to play the field a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, yeah. Kicking off for the Red Tornadoes, number 58, Mike Sinkovich. This one's kicked in the direction of Barrasso. He takes it on the six yard line. Tries to take it outside, finds a hole, but a good tackle made at about the 34 yard That's line Zublik. by number 30 Zublik, but really hanging on to him was number two, Nick Chesney. Yeah, yeah. Zublik made the initial hit there and, and he made sure. Zublik, if, he, if Zublik doesn't make the tackle, this kid's picking up some, some extra yardage there, but yeah. uh, Zublik did hold on. Well, the secret there is Zublik and Chesney have to hold that lane uh, yep. and they did. First down Colts with 3.46 left in the first quarter. Acosti sets his Colts out of a power eye formation. Gonna try Barrasso. Gains about maybe a yard on there. Van Duren on the tackle. Also getting up uh, Terry Meyer. And 74 was in O'Brien. That's where I saw the, the strange yep. number 74. So yep. good tackle by O'Brien. Yeah, we talked a little bit about Matt last week, and it's just great to see him into the game tonight and playing. Second down, eight yards to go. Neil Nowitzki split far right. Dacosti back to pass. Big rush from Sinkovich, but a catch made 
after about a six-yard gain. Tackle made by Meyer and number 33 with the reception, Joe Ott, out of the fullback position. Terry played that exactly the way he, he, he only could play it. Uh, he was on the, on the receiver very tight and, and did make a swipe for the ball, too, to try to block it. Third down and about four yards to go for the Colts. DeCosti out of the power eye again. Oh, and movement on the cold side of the line, and this one will go back five yards against Marion Catholic. You gotta, we gotta assume, guys, that number eight is Balliot. Okay. We have to. Okay. I mean, I can't imagine. He, now, 30, the number that he was supposed to be is was 38. 38, but he's right. not lined up. He's not on the sideline. He's not anywhere to be found, so we have to make the assumption without being able to tell exactly, but I think number eight right now is Balliot. He's just wearing a different number at the moment. We'll make adjustments here. Thank you, Warren. I, try, I was trying to search the, the sideline just to be sure he wasn't hurt or something, but I can't find his number anywhere, and he's, and he's too good of a player not to be into the game, so i got to assume that's what we're looking at. Third down and nine yards to go. DeCosti, back to pass. Looks over the middle and just unloads one. Oof. Incomplete. Yeah, that was either, either the receiver went the wrong way or he just threw it the wrong way, but there was no one. It wasn't even any of us close enough to it to, to do anything with it. So a fourth think, down comes up now for, for the Colts. Yeah, I think he indicated that the ball was that it slipped out of his hands a little bit. Punning situation for the Colts. Van Dorn and Sebus deep for the Red Tornadoes. There's 226 still remaining here in the, in the in the first period. This is a long, long first period, it seems like. Snaps back to Lytle. Good snap. Big rush from Moroz. Nice Kicks kick. at Sebus. He takes it on about the 26-yard line and tries to break outside. Now he does. Finds some running room and knocked out of bounds at about the 39-yard line. The wall was setting. Yeah. It just took yep. where he had to catch it on this side of the field, Wayne. It just took him a little longer to get over there to get behind the wall. I'm trying to see who, who that, who is that? Uh, Jason Malakowski, crushing block on a 30-yard line. He took two kids out. Bailey and Veach now back in, so you'll see Bailey run the fullback position and Veach at the tailback. Right. Looking at the. Uh, at Chesney at one of the wide receivers and Smith out here at the other. Chesney takes Paracella's place. Tries Bailey off that same right side and gains only about a yard. And what they're doing, they're trying to go there, but Coach Williams will come back with some different stuff right now, Wayne. Well, th that wasn't a power play. That was actually a trap over to center, center guard position there. And looking, for, and it actually, Bailey, it was sort of a slashback, not a straight dive. So you're, you're sort of giving them a little bit of motion, uh, misdirection play here, trying to shift the linebackers around. And you know that once uh, Bailey or Veach get past the, uh, the line of scrimmage, they're, they're going to be gone. Out of the split backs, Chesney and Van Doren split far left. Sebus pitches to Bailey, sends him outside, finds some room, and gets to about the 47-yard line. Yeah, very close to the close first to down. a first down. Very close, and Bailey again, as I had said before, is really just dominating this Colt defense right now. They're unable to stop him, and unfortunately, if you can't stop the fullback going up the middle or taking a pitch like that, you're going to be in serious shape for the remainder of this game. So they need to find something to do. And of course, what happens is you stop Bailey finally. And you'll have Veach run all over you. So. And, and the thing of it is, you know, that all of a sudden now you're, you're Keen Bailey, Keen Bailey, because he's carrying the ball most of this first quarter. And all, and like you said, all you have to do is just Veach one time someplace and he's going to be gone. Out of the power, cheater back formation, the Red Tornadoes are going to go. Going to go to Bailey right behind it and get stopped. Yeah, he didn't get yeah, it. Yeah, no, he had nowhere to go. They, they jammed up so much over there. There were so many Colts over there that it was just not going anywhere, guys. Well, you can see, go to the well this will so be an interesting times, call, gang. Watch the call. And he's going to kick. Yep. So Good he, call. He, he was thinking about it, and that's call. what I like about him. We, of course, we saw him set the, uh, the tone for last week's game when he went for a, a fourth and one inside his own territory in the very first quarter of the game. So, And one thing about Coach Williams, he likes to keep everybody on the edge of their seat wondering what's going to happen. Terry Meyer with the snap back to Steve Sinkovich. Good kick. High, booming kick. Taken by Nowitzki on about the 20 yard line, and he's hit by Meyer and number, number 40. 40 was, was oh, 40 first. was the initial. Oh, hit. 40. 
51, uh, Karpinski, also number 40 for the Red Tornadoes, Aaron which Ziegler. is Ziegler, right. Ziegler made a nice play that time because the, the, the carrier, ball carrier, tried to cut up inside of him. He was holding his lane and being where he was, and he tried to cut up inside him, reached out and turned him, and as he turned him, the rest of the guys nailed him. Six seconds left in the first quarter. This will be the final play of the first quarter out of the I formation. Going to try the option, fumble on the play, and recovered by the Red Tornadoes. Going Big Red's way in that. Well, that was just a great defensive yeah. play by the Red Tornadoes. I can't DeCosti, DeCosti was rushed. He had to hurry the throw, and that, that play just isn't going to go with the speed of this defense. I saw a dog over there, but I didn't see who came up with it. I don't know I don't know who the guy Did anybody see who no, came I up with the ball? But I'll tell you what, you have to give the, the right side of that defensive line there to credit because uh, with Sinkovich and Jeff Evans and Dalkus over there, uh, they were the ones that were putting the pressure on the quarterback as he was trying to, to roll that way before he pitched the ball. Here at the, uh, the quarter break, of course, between the first and second quarter, I'll take a moment to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching WKMC-TV. Broadcasting directly from the campus at Mount Carmel Area High School over a microwave signal WLX267. We are an instructional fixed television service, and you are catching us every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. on Channel 13 of the Service Electric Cable System. He scared me when I turned. And, they, and they're doing a close-up of you, Warren. I don't think you should get that close. <laughs> <laughs> Ball sitting on the Marion 23-yard line on the fumble recovery. Mount Carmel over. The area takes over first and ten, and Big Red's knocking on the door again, guys. Here early in the second period. Chesney split far left. Mike Smith to the right side of the Red Tornado lineup. Back to pass. Sebus looks at Chesney in the corner of the end zone. A little too far. Incomplete. That was a nice play, though, because the defensive back did not turn around until it was too late. He would yeah. not have been able to do much with that pass had Sebus been able to hit Chesney with it. And then what you see there is is, is he's probably used to throwing that pass uh, to Paracelo. You got a little bit more speed out of Paracelo, and yeah. that was the difference in the touch of the pass. Second down, 10 yards to go. Van Doren split left, and now uh, Chesney goes to the right. Out of the eye formation. Tries Veach up the middle, and a good play made by the left tackle. He came sneaking in from the left side here, and he might have been up the left end, number 80, uh, Alex Vitti. Yeah, Vitti was, was really on the ball on that play. Vitti or Vitti? Uh, Vitti. We'll Let's pick it. Vitti. Okay. Third and ten for the Red Tornadoes. Split back formation now for the Red Tornadoes. Sebas, straight drop, big rush, screen pass. Oh Hit Smith and nobody was there, incomplete, and we're going to have a roughing the passer also. So first down, Red Tornadoes to the 11-yard line. <laughs> there, there were a lot of red shirts oh, there, weren't there, Wade? You a, couldn't see the receiver in yeah, the middle there. I, I, did, I was trying to figure out who he threw it to. A tough call for the Colts. Still taking unsportsmanlike penalty. Yeah, they're going to. Just talked about, and it's going to be roughing the passer. Not the place you want to rough the passer right now, deep in your own territory. So uh, they're going to get another penalty marched off, and the ball's already sitting right around the 12-yard line. We're seeing some power come in here right now, guys. That's what that's what we're looking at as they march this one off, and it'll put it on the about the six and a half yard line. First down and goal to go, Red Tornadoes. I missed the hit on the quarterback yeah, on Sebus was, because was, I was watching downfield. I'll tell you what, the, I mean, he knew it was a good call. I mean, no one in front of us is arguing the no. call. It was long after the ball was thrown to, to Smith. Cheater backs power left for the Red Tornadoes. We're going left. Bailey fumbles and recovered on about the 10-yard line. Now, you don't see that very often from us anyway. No. A miscue like that. Now you're brought the ball back out, and you're going to be sitting probably past the 10 yard line. Yeah, it is. So just over the 10 yard line now. Second down and goal to go for Mount Carmel on the Merritt Catholic 10 yard line. You bring Bailey out of the lineup now. 
And uh, Veach is in behind the power. You got, yeah, you got Meyer and Sinkovich going to line up in those cheater backs with Veach behind them. Good power left there for the Red Tornadoes. Going to keep the ball to Sebus. He's going to run to the corner of the end zone and gets to the seven yard line. Great play made by number 26, Max Fade. 26 saves a touchdown. He would have went in otherwise. Nice play that time. It's a good call that time. Yes, it is. Move to the power. Move with the speed that you, the best speed you have back there. And it brings up now a third down and eight now with the ball on the eight and still goal to goal. So I'll see what an interesting call now. And again, Vichas has come out of the lineup for Mount Carmel area. You have Sinkovich and Bailey, and Bailey will be the the uh, eye back in this formation. We're going to go power right. Sebus back to pass. Now he's going to run with the ball. Keeps a good block. And he's going to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Red Tornado. Oh, my goodness, folks. There you have the speed. You don't see that speed in high school very often. And Sebus brought it, guys. He brought it all that time. And there's nothing on defense you can do right. to stop that play. Nothing. And there are two defensive. Uh, the defensive, defensive ends backs came in, right? Had, had, had him keyed twice. He, uh, they had the angle on him coming down in the five-yard line. The key block there was from Jason Malakoski uh, to break Sebus out through the end. Long snap from Els to Chesney, and Mike Sinkovich with the kick. Snaps back, it's down, the kick's up, and it's good. With 9.31 left in the first half, the score, the Red Tornadoes 17, the Colts nothing. Of course, every extra point attempt is a record-setting one now. He'll set the record each time he kicks it through the, through the goalpost tonight. And Marion, the Marion Colts with 9.31 left in the second period find themselves in a pretty steep hole, guys. This is a, an Eastern Championship game against the stingiest defense yeah. in the state of Pennsylvania. You're 17 points behind. You don't have the most sophisticated passing game. I mean, that's not what they brought to the game. They don't, they don't, they don't say Marion passes. Now they will. We'll see that Dikoski go back now and start to throw the ball. But one of the one of the reasons that they're not going to be known as that passing team is if you look at what they've done all year, there's not really a go-to receiver, Wayne. You had alluded to that right. earlier. There's no guy that's on the field that you got to really be worried about. They'll throw the ball a little bit. They're going to try to get the ball to the to the, some of the backs in the flat, which we've seen in previous games. But they are not the real threat passing that other teams have been in, in, in the last four and, or five and games. What does that, and that, what that does for our, our defensive backs, it makes them play a looser game. Uh, you know, being able to cover more of the field and, and more defenders. Yeah, Marion is Marion Catholic has thrown for 1,333 yards across the entire 13 games. Oh, the ball's bouncing loose, and the Red Tornadoes get them down on about the 15-yard line. Good cover that time by number 41, Donati, or that could have been a touchdown for the Red Tornadoes. Yes, Van Doren, number 27, down around the ball again. The leading receiver on this Colt team, just as an example, the leading receiver is Nowitzki. And he's, he's caught uh, 29 passes the whole season. So it gives you some idea that, that they're not really a real strong passing team. And unfortunately, they need to throw the ball a little bit here to get some movement upfield. Van Dorn in, in playing in place of uh, Paracella. Paracella. Tries it up the middle to Barrasso. Gets about maybe two yards. I see Dalkas in on the tackle. Down on the bottom of the pile, number one, Terry Meyer. 74. And 74, O'Brien. O'Brien. And this, this is going to be kind of interesting now to watch how this game progresses, at least offensively for the Colts. I mean, they've got to, to be worried to be, about being drawn out of their game plan. They're going out of the split backs. DeCosti looks to throw. Now he runs out of the pocket. And big hit over there by number 60, Malakoski. But there's a penalty flag, and I'm not sure why. I don't know where that, yeah. I don't know either. That could we'll be a see. clip. It could be a clip, though. Okay, because or a hold. It could be one of those. No, it's face a face, face mask. mask. Oh, he had him by the feet, though. I thought. I, I thought he did. Yeah. He must have reached his hand up and scraped the face mask as he was bringing him down. But again, a nice play by by the All Stater Malakowski, and and again, he's been all over the field in in, in this uh, shall we say championship round of play oh, here since kidding. we began in the districts. And that's going to be a big one. That's a 15 yarder coming up against the uh, Big Red. Moves the ball out to the 30, just over the 31 yard line. I'll tell you what, we have to, uh, I'm sorry, the know, 26 uh, yard line. Number 27, Van Doren was in that time and he was on a split side over here on the, on the twin set. And uh, that's where that's where they were looking to throw the ball. And uh, defensively we had everybody covered. 
Colts set up first down and 10. Tries Barrasso, finds a little bit of running room. Terry Meyer gets him after about a three-yard gain. Jeff Evans had him in the backfield, and he, and he snuck out there and got about three yards. But when you only get three yards, that's a good play. <laughs> Well, I think we would have seen Wyoming area give $100 to get a three-yard game yeah. in the first half last week. So I guess it's all a matter of perception right now about how you're running the ball. Nobody realized that that Beck, he needed only 12 yards uh, to right. get 1,000 yards, and he, and he only got, got six. six. Yeah. He got six. Yeah, six yards of the whole game, and he didn't get over 1,000. Out of the eye. Fake to Barrasso. DaCosti keeps the ball himself going to the outside. Good tackle made by number 80, Chris Cuff. Yeah, that's got to be Cuff there. He, he fought off. There was two guys took him on. He fought both of them off and finally split them and brought the quarterback down on a big loss now for Marion. And they'll bring up a third and about 12 now, guys, for, for the Colts. And again, they're in, they're in a, a bad position here again offensively, and, it, and it's becoming kind of redundant after a yeah. while for them. 7.30 left in the first half. An obvious passing play for the Colts, and this will be interesting. He, uh, Dukoski, he has been under extreme pressure the entire time he's gone back to pass. He only has one back with him. Rolls to the right, now he cuts back to the left. Cuff after him, tries throwing downfield, looks at Nowitzki, gets him at the 41-yard line. First down and 10 Colts. Nice, nice play, play that time. Good nice play. play. Nowitzki made a great catch that time. And again, Nowitzki is the leading receiver on the team. I just talked about him earlier. Good pass that time by Dukoski, too. Well, what you also saw from Dukoski there was no rush. He had time. He yeah. rolled back there and had some time. Good blocking from the center of the Marion line that time, Wayne. Well, Malakoski was in uh, putting some pressure on, but once he got blocked out of the way, the quarterback had enough time to roll to the sideline and throw. Got a split back. Tries Ott. No gain. Tackle made there by number one, Terry Meyer. And 47, Steve Sikovich. A gain of, of really just about a yard. This is the, deep, the deepest penetration that the Colts have made in the Mount Carmel area territory tonight. They're on the Mount Carmel area 39 yard line now. Second down, nine yards to go. Dukoski tries it up the middle and gets about maybe three yards. He just ran over everybody and got tackled. Uh, Malakoski, Jeff Evans there, and Mike Zinkovich. Harmonoski that time came up limping a little bit in the middle of the line. He's the guard. Number 50. And again, yards hard to come by now. Third and five for Marion. Go out of the split back. They put a motion man to the left side. Tocosti, back to pass. Looks over the middle, incomplete to Ott at about the 32-yard line. He had Ott open, but he had to throw the ball over everybody's outstretched hands, and it got too high on him, and he couldn't catch Ott. And now it brings up a fourth and five for the Colts at the, at the uh, Big Red 39, and they're going to, you know, they're going to go for it here. Well, they're bringing the punt team in. You think they're going to punt here? I don't know. Leitzel's another quarterback. Remember that. So yeah, but why would you? You can look for the fake here because of Leitzel being the quarterback. Well, maybe maybe trying to pin us back to the, in our, next to our goal line. That's the only shot you have here. I would have thought to show some confidence and try to pick up the five. Well, they're set up in the punt formation. Snaps back. He's going to kick. Yeah, he never even looked otherwise. An end over end that Sebas calls a fair catch on the five-yard line. First down, Red Tornadoes, 528 left in the first half. Well, Marion completes a nice pass, gets their deepest penetration, and, and, and uh, stalls at the Mount Carmel area 39-yard line when they dearly needed to get some points here. You know, 528 remaining in the second quarter. They're down 17-0, and Big Red now has the ball again. There he started the clock, so the Red Tornadoes have to get a play and get going here. The clock didn't start on the scoreboard, though. They won't either until they snap. Oh, that's right. On the punt. Out of the eye. Going to go to Steve Sinkovich. Up the middle, powering to the 15-yard line. 
That was hard running there, guys. Wasn't that like trying to <laughs> wrestle a bull to the ground when he had all of them there? On a tackle for Marion Catholic. Tell me he's not a nightmare running at you coming through the line. And, and you know, he's probably drooling at the mouth when his number's called to carry yep. that. You know yep. what I mean? On the play, bring up a second and one. Second down and one. Second down, one yard to go for the Red Tornadoes. That's actually his sixth, sixth rushing attempt of the year. Handing it off to the lead back. Out of the eye. Going to go to Veach behind Sinkovic in the center of the line, and it was close to a first down at the 15-yard line. Yeah, I, I, where he parked it, it is a first down. Yeah, that, that play was designed to get a yard there, and it did. Beach getting off, off the pile there, and I'll tell you what, he took a nice hit from everybody in the center there, but... Now they're calling it third calling down. It third Time down. out for a measurement. I, I think he's, I think it's, a, depending where, you're, where he put it, and it looks to me like it's going to be a first down there. Well, we're going to measure and see. It's hard to tell because they're standing back from the line a little bit there. I can't tell exactly where he is, but he's going to be real close if he isn't. And either way, it's only third down, guys. That's right. <laughs> so it's not the end of the world right now. But it's going to be real close. And it's first down. I thought he had it. I was, <laughs> you called it. I thought he did. You haven't called many this year no, either. No, I was. Well, my success rate's not exactly something to scream about now. Is it? <laughs> Sometimes when you're really poor at something, you stop doing it. <laughs> 424 left in the first half. There's not too many limbs for you to crawl out on no. anymore. You broke a lot. No, the tree's basically almost dead right now. I mean, <laughs> There's, there's, there's guys at the bottom. There's lumberjacks with saws just standing around waiting. Out of the eye formation. Bailey back in at fullback. They give the ball to Bailey on a delay, and he gains about maybe three yards. Bailey, Bailey on the carry. And it looks, you know, more and more like Big Red is, is really quite content here to, to play ball control, run the clock down, and, and, and the clock, you know, we're going to be in the, in the first half here, but we're three minutes and 50 seconds from the second half, and, cl and the clock will become an enemy of the Colts. When we, when we enter that second half right now, they have done very little offensively. One big pass play to put them in Mount Carmel territory, but other than that, have not done much with the ball and have not really been able to stop Mount Carmel area very much tonight either. Chesney split to the right on second down seven. Pitch back to Bailey, tries taking it outside, finds a hole, cuts it up the middle, and looks Lango. like we're going to have a clip on this play against the Red Tornadoes. Clip or a hold? A hold. I would say a hold there. Hold it. You got her. There's Mount Carmel area was, was penalized 72 times for 646 yards this year. And the opposition up until this game was penalized 63 times for 573 yards. So we, we get a couple of more penalties a game than the other guys do. And it seems like a lot more bigger penalties, too. Not so many five-yarders, you know. Second down, 11 yards to go for the Big Red with uh, 322 left on the clock. There's some more telling statistics there would be touchdowns over the period of this season. Mount Carmel had 62, the opposition 17. That might have something to do with it, too. Out of the shotgun formation. Snaps back to Sebas. He's just going to run with the ball this time. They're coming student body right. Tries taking it outside and close to a first down. Uh, he'll be about a yard short. Good yeah. play. Good, very good play. Yeah, never, never was going to pass. That was no. not a pass play. No, he's about three yards short where they mark it. Third down and three yards to go. A lot of people shifting in and out of the Red Tornado offensive lineup tonight, Wayne. Well, you know... <laughs> We, we have so many quality athletes over there on the sideline, you know, and, and now's the time with the score the way it is. You want to try to get some uh, different faces in there. Power eye formation, timeout called by Al Bailey. And I'm not sure why. We might have been missing one player, or did we run out of time? Well, looks like we're, we're bringing a player somebody. onto the field here. Yeah, there comes Veach onto the field right now. But Bailey was lined up in the eye, uh, in the power eye. Up. There are 11 guys out there. Okay. Uh, somebody's going to have to lead the line up here. Well, there must have been a play called, or Bailey saw something that he didn't like, and he just called timeout right away. Yeah, and there's 11 because there's Bailey leaving the lineup now, unless something happened to him. You know, maybe, maybe something happened to him physically. I'm not sure. 
Doesn't look that way. He's not going really to see anybody, so he just goes over to the Red Tornado sideline. Good crowd from here from the Red Tornadoes tonight, all with their uh, red hankies. You see them waving yeah. them over yep, there. Yep, and they uh, do. They're, they're all red and white over there right now. Good support from the Big Red. And uh, 302 left in the first half. This is an important third down play for the Red Tornadoes there. Want to keep this drive going out of their own end of the down here, and they go out of the power eye formation. Going to try Veach off the power eye, and first down, I think. It's going to be close. Nope, depends where they mark it. He no. marked it back. He pulled it back. Yep. He's right on the edge of that line now. He's real close, but I don't think he's going to pick it up. But I'll tell you what, if I was Whitey, I'd go for it. And that's why I get to make this call, because I'm not Whitey. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be short by about six inches. They're going to measure, though, just to be sure. So this sure. before, he's going to go for it. And, and that's, that's what Coach Williams brings to the game that not many other coaches are going to ever bring. you got to like this style of football. They don't do the quarterback sneak and first down. Red Tornadoes to, I, I, I'm not sure who got the ball. It yeah. was a great move, great play. I think, I thought it was. Sinkovich again. Yep, yep. Steve Sinkovich first right down. The line there. See now, and I was just gonna say that, we're changing tapes there. If you were Marion, what would you defend? Right. Would you defend the right. cheater backs coming up and looking for the power either right or left? The quarterback sneak. Right. And here's the third play right now that we've seen the second time tonight, giving it to the lead uh, fullback. That was Steve Zinkovich over John Els and Mike Zinkovich. Yeah. Yep. And Steve laid Mike out there. But more he ran right over his back. More importantly, there is is that was a real sign of confidence, a real show of confidence in that offense. I mean, you're on your own 25-yard line, folks, in an Eastern Championship file, and you go for it. You gotta like that. 2:20 in the clock, winding down out of the I formation. Beach goes in motion to the left side. Sebas going to roll to that side, keep the ball, cuts back, and gains maybe about four yards on that carry. Tackle made by number eight there, uh, Corey Balliot. Tell you what, if he could have split those two guys, he had Bailey in front of him. Bailey took one guy, but the other guy got inside there. Had he split the two guys, it was a touchdown. Yeah. That was a nice, that play looked really good, except they caught him right at the last second as he was cutting across, but I think you're going to see that play more and more. I two good plays with Sebus, that one, and the other one where he was in a shotgun and we ran student body right. We were trying to get Sebus out to the outside because of his speed. Out of the eye, 127. The Red Tornado's not in a hurry here to do anything. Give the ball to Veach and he gets maybe about two yards. Tackle made by number 74, Kent Smith. And, and in the Eastern final, you don't want to be in a hurry. You don't need to put a lot of points You're on the board. You need up. to win the game, right? You're 17 so. up. It's your game now. It's, it's our call for the rest of the evening here to win or lose this thing. I think one of the things we noticed defensively is the Colts are really keying on Jonathan. Right. They are not going to let V hurt them. And unfortunately, when you don't, you let Bailey hurt you or the rest of them. So, I mean, the, the defensive part of the scheme here to, to stop Veach so far has worked. They, they've bottled Jonathan up pretty well. But unfortunately, they've given up some big yardage elsewhere and, and find themselves in a, in a hole here near the, the close with 44 seconds left. Go out of the power eye to Bailey, cuts it back. First down, Red Tornadoes at the 38-yard line. Nice run, Al Bailey. Good blocking by the power backs. Steve Sinkovich, Terry Meyer, and Jason Malakoski. Well, I'll tell you what, to get the, for the, those power backs to make the blocks that they're making, that uh, right side of the line there with Sinkovich and... and uh, Chewy on that right side and Chris Cuff. They need to open up a hole for the other two uh, lead blocks to get through. 24 seconds left on the clock in this first half and winding down. Looks over at Chesney. Good. Oh, almost caught by Nick Chesney. And 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 the pass could it could have just been a little higher. Nick had that one. Oh. At the time, Matula. There was two on two there. Number two on number two, and Matula made a nice defensive play that time, keeping the ball from Chesney. He had him covered well. He had yeah. Nick Chesney covered well, but Chesney came over him and well, grabbed the ball. He, he Chesney the had ball the so well. Right. You know, he, he has that that sense about him where the ball is all the time, and that's what you love in a receiver. You know, you know he's always going to be there touching the ball no matter what. Probably be the final play of the first half here. And they down the ball. And that's it. The uh, halftime score, Red Tornado 17, 
The Marion Catholic Colts, nothing. We'll be back with some halftime stats in one moment. All right, we're back, and Wayne has some halftime stats from the other side of the field, Jose Gonzalo. Oh, these are from Jose. Uh, in the rushing department, the Tornadoes, 32 carries for 120 yards. In the passing department, we're two for four for 31 yards. Bailey carrying the ball, 12 for 62. Veach, nine for 33. Sebas, nine for 24. And Sinkovic, two for 10. Uh, in the receiving department, Van Doren, one for 21. And Smith, Mike Smith, one for 10. Tornadoes have nine first downs. On the other side of the field uh, for the Colts, the rushing department, uh, 10 carries for a minus one yard. Passing two of five for 38 for two first downs. Wow. Now, what stands out there, guys, as we had said, Marion Catholic has gained minus one yard on the ground here in the first half, uh, mimicking Wyoming area of last week. Wyoming area, of course, at halftime was minus 32 yards on the ground. And again, the, the key, there's only one key now left in the game for Marion Catholic, and that is they must move the ball on the ground. They must be able to get an offensive series rolling and string two or three first downs. They have two first downs in the entire half. That is not the way you can win this football game. They begin the second half in a 17-point hole. So, it, I mean, they need to do some major improvement offensively, and they need to do it right away because, as I said earlier, now that the clock starts ticking in the second half, the clock becomes a, a loaded gun for Marion. Well, and, and rem take, remember this Barrasso kid. I just want to get in on that. The Barrasso kid did 234 yards last week against Bermudian Springs, yeah. the District 3 champion. You take, you take a look at uh, the Tornadoes defensively. Uh, again, negative one yards again in the first half. And I think just about in the last five or six games, uh, we've held just about every team to negative yardage. Uh, in, the, in the passing department, the Colts have not shown too, too much in the first half. No. He, he does look a little uh, shaken back there, and I think it is because of the, the uh, amount of pressure that he's receiving off that defensive line. Now, he is a better than 50% passer for the last half of the season that he played, so he can throw the ball. Mike Sinkovich with the kickoff. Taken by number two, Matula. Tries it up the left side of the field. Finds a little gap, and he's oh, nailed. That's good. <laughs> it's Big Yusenchak. hit by Yusenchak. He just dropped him. Oh, yeah. the freshman said hello. Let's start the second half with a hit here. Colts nice. take over now on, on their own 31-yard line. And, and it's crunch time for the Colts. I know that it's early in the second half, but I'm going to tell you, with this defense, if they do not get something on the board and start stringing something together, this night is over. Paracella stays out of the lineup. Van Duren in at the right cornerback position for him. Tukosti, big hit by number 80, Chris Cuff. Pressure put on by 60, Malakoski. And, and, and Malikuski flushed him in the in the in the cuff that time, and that, and that's what he wanted. Number 22 went in motion uh, from the left side of their offensive formation all the way around to the right, and he and, and they did exactly what they wanted. They flooded the zone over here, and he was free on about the 50 yard line, but unfortunately Malikuski putting the pressure on the quarterback. Second down, 10 yards to go. Number 17, Radoka split far right. Tukosti on the draw play. Barrasso, first good run, first down for 11 yards. Out of the draw play, Bar uh, Barrasso puts 11 yards on the uh, field. A good run. That was the best run of the, of the uh, game so far for Barrasso and, and the Colts here. And again, uh, that was trying to negate some of the heavy pressure on the passing game by giving that little uh, uh, handoff to Barrasso there on the draw. So. The first success of the evening for the Colts. Good call from Stan Dukoski. Dukoski back to pass. Now he rolls. Big rush. And, oh, that's that's intentional grounding all the way, and they don't call it. <laughs> there, I mean, there's nobody there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure who they're gonna who they who they thought he was throwing it to. Uh, Sinkovich was about the only yeah. one in the area. My interpretation of that rule, and, and and I must be wrong because I've seen it last week, and I thought twice last week he threw it to no one that right. was anywhere near him. So we haven't seen intentional grounding so far in these last two games. But again, under extreme pressure, and and again you're seeing not a bad passing game, but not a real sophisticated one. Going to try the draw to Barrasso again. This time read by Meyer and 47, Steve Sinkovich. Sinkovich put one right to his chest. Now Barrasso got Barrasso shaken up, and he's going to, he's, a, ooh, yeah, he came up shaken up that time. Uh, he's limping, and he's going to have to come out of the game. I know the stand, uh, Coach DeCosti is looking at him. 
Uh, well, he's you get, moving pretty well, but he, he does have to come out a little while. they got to give him a rest. You Bob. get hit by Terry Meyer and Steve Sinkovich at the same time, boy. You're you're getting nailed. Well, your two linebackers are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. You know, they're they're reading the play. They, they drop back into a pass zone, but then at the same time, they saw the draw play and filled the hole very well. Nowitzki into the lineup, split far left. Dacosti on the slant. Incomplete. And no flags. Now my question, my, my question there on that one is, was that ball catchable? First of all, I mean it wasn't even wasn't even near the receiver. Now well, Nowitzki, Nowitzki needs to be a little careful. You, I know how he felt, but you don't want to tell the, the umpire exactly how you're feeling out there. Brings up a punting situation for the Colts. Of course, it is fourth and seven now from their own 44-yard line. Lytle in the punt for the Colts. Snaps back a little high. Big rush from 26, and that's going to be a penalty roughing the punter against the Red Tornadoes. Now, I'll tell you what, like, uh, you know, that, it was a good play. It was a good play. It was just that he, he, he certainly didn't gauge the, where the ball was going to be, where the, the kicker's foot. It's not that he hit the kicker. He might have tipped the ball. He might have got the ball. No, he didn't. Uh, But regardless, once you once the ball is kicked and, and the kicker has his foot up off the ground, uh, you know, he's very vulnerable. Big penalty, I'll tell yes, you what. It, it keeps the Marion drive alive early here in the in the uh, second half in the third quarter with 10.05 left on the clock. Moves the ball down to the Mount Carmel area now, 41-yard line, where it is first and 10 for the Marion Colts. And again, the, the second best threat they've had this evening. Barrasso stays out of the lineup. In fact, he's on the bench right now, and they're retaping his ankle. He, we, we will see him again. Donati in at the tailback spot. Gets to the outside. Finds five, six, seven yards. And a hit made by number two, Nick Chesney. But a nice run by, by, by Donati. Very good run because he was hit twice. One Terry Meyer hit him in the, uh, in the backfield. And he got out there, and I think Dalkis got a hand on him before he was tackled. Second down, three yards to go. Ott goes in at fullback, and they're going to go power right. Dacosti, incomplete, third down. That time he went for uh, Matula, number two. Third and three now for the Colts, and a, and a, and a real big third down, and, a, and if they don't get it a real big fourth down, they're going to have to go for it. I cannot imagine yeah. they would they would punt. They did in this situation in the first half, but if they don't pick it up here on third down, I, I would I would say they would almost have to go for the fourth down play. You're going to try Donati. Big Ooh. hit by 47, oh. Steve Sinkovich. How well, do they didn't do. pick it up. <laughs> Well, they lost. They lost yeah, a yard on that play. Two yards, I think. Two, two yards, yards, you're right. Yep. But that doesn't change yep. what I said. They have to go for it, and they are bringing uh, a Balliette, number eight, I believe, into the lineup. We're still hoping he's number number eight. Yeah, he is. <laughs> we don't see this other number anywhere. So a big now, and it's a fourth down and four from the Mount Carmel area, just outside the Mount Carmel area, 41-yard line. Out of the split backs. Tacosti on the option. Pitches back to Donati. Can he make it? No. Good play. Nick Chesney and Terry Meyer and 26. Yep, Lentini. Lentini in there. And that's the, the Colts will turn it over on their really their best shot here of the game. And, and they turn over on downs. Got to be a little demoralizing that way. And of course, they did it without their leading back in the lineup. Uh, Barrasso still on the sidelines as they frantically. Uh, retape his ankle. They're getting his socks and shoes back on. So I expect we're going to see him yeah. in the next offensive now, series. The problem with that uh, with that play, it, it might have been a good play to call at that point, but with the speed of the defense, that that tailback was entirely too deep when that pitch came back. Red Tornado's out of the split back. Pitch to Veach. Going to try to take it outside, and now he still does. And back, he's tackled after about a two-yard loss. Good lateral pursuit by the Marion Colts. Number 33, Joe Ott, and number 80, Alex Beattie. 
Now, Big Red, one thing they need to guard against here is they have got to keep that intensity, at least on right. offense. Now, defensively, they're not having much of a problem with it. But offensively, you got to keep your intensity up and you've got to move the ball here. 17 points is, is not the end of the game, guys. I mean, that, that's something they better realize, too. Out of the eye formation. 8-10. Oh, Bailey's hit big. Big hit by 71, Horvath. Yeah, we had, we had seen Horvath in the first game, guys. And remember, he, he played an absolute whale of game in, in the 28-0 shutout of the Colts in the mid-regular in the mid -regular season. But tonight, at least, Horvath has been fairly quiet. We have not called his number much defensively. So that was his first real big play of the game. Third down and 12 yards to go for the Red Tornadoes. They go out of split backs. Sebas, back to pass, big rush, shovel pass to Veach. And a good play, excellent play made by the Marion defense. Number 33, Ott, and number two, also Matula. Fourth down in a punting situation for the Red Tornadoes. And yeah, they read that play and closed real well. They really did. And that play had the potential to be big there. Yes, it did. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a nice play when we run it, but that time the Colts really saw what was happening or all over it. Number two, Matula, and number 12, Neil Nowitzki, will be deep for the Colts. In punt formation, number 47, Steve Sinkovich. I'm not sure what we're doing here. I think they're going to call the play now. It, he didn't actually start the clock, so oh. Steve Sinkovich brought the punt team okay. back to talk to him a little we're, bit. We were all lined up there. I didn't know what we were going to be doing there. Number one, Terry Meyer with the long snap. Snaps back to Sinkovich. Good long line drive kick taken by Matula. Matula gets away from a group. And Steve Sinkovich runs him out of bounds at the 41 yard line. Meyer that time also. Meyer spends a lot of time Meyer on the other sidelines. Right. You know that? <laughs> Terry likes to, likes to talk to everybody on the other sidelines once in a while. You see how they're doing. <laughs> how's it, how was the bus trip? You know, that kind of stuff. First down and 10 for the Colts from the 45 yard line. We're seeing a pretty sizable change of field position here in the second half. The Colts are starting off at least in good field position. 6.44 left on the clock. Going to try Donati. He's not going anywhere. Yeah, Donati on the carry. Yeah, Yeah, but the initial hit. And the dog. And the dog. Yeah. Jeff Evans and Malakoski. Brasso's back in, though. Donati came out and Brasso came back in, and he's running pretty well. I said we, as we said, we, we they heavily taped his ankle on the sidelines there, and I saw they're having a tough time getting his sock back on. They had a lot of tape there, but uh, he should be back in, in play uh, player form here. The way he looked, he didn't look like he was limping at all coming onto the field. And again, he would have been that would have been a big blow to, to the to the Colts to lose Barrasso at this juncture of the football game. Matula split far left. Dacosti, no backs. Rolls back, has time, looks over the middle, incomplete oh. to number 17, Radoka, at the from the tight end. He came out at, I think, a tight end yeah. spot right there. He was wide Ooh, open, too. Wide he open. just dropped the ball that time, and <laughs> that's a tough thing to do. Actually, excellent pass defense blocking that time by the uh, pass blocking by the Marion line, Wayne. Well, if you take a look at their backs, they brought their backs up into a very, very close stance to the, to the back of the line. Uh, and, and what that does, it does not give your defense time to build up momentum as they're rushing the quarterback. Third down, 10 yards to go. Trips left. Barrasso, the lone back for Marion. Dacosti, back to pass, tries cutting back the middle, fumbles, and it goes into the hands <laughs> of number 53. Sheer the center. <laughs> right, it wasn't. It in was the air, a, he got it. It wasn't a pass. No, no. It was no. a fumble in the air. In it was either Malakowski. Malakowski, yeah, Malakowski did it. Hit the ball out of his hands. <laughs> that time, Sheer, real heads up football play by the center that time of the Colts. Catching the ball in midair and uh, <laughs> saving a, a recovered fumble that time for the Colts. But again, their best field position now squandered as they come up to fourth and 12 and are in a punting position. Number three, Matt Leitzel in punt formation. Deep for the Red Tornadoes, number five, Sebas. And 27, Matt Van Duren. Snaps back to Leitzel. Kicks away in the direction of Sebas. He lets it bounce and picks it up at about the 19-yard line and is tackled at the 22. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes. That was 32 from uh, the Colts that time. And that was a nice play he made down there. And he's not even listed, is he? I'm 
So I'm watching where he came out of there, but he wasn't even listed there. Nope. He threw a few extra numbers in this game, didn't they? They did. <laughs> well, it looks like they have actually new uniform shirts. And some new ones and yeah. some old ones. And I, and I think right. we got a little confused in that. They didn't have all the right numbers in the program, so you got to bear with us a little bit there. But whoever he was, he made a nice play. Out of the power, well, the cheater back left formation. Going to run to the right side, away from it. Veach takes the ball, and great lateral pursuit again over there on that side by the Colts. Looked like 33 ought in on the tackle. This will be second down and about seven yards to go. Now, Big Red would, would dearly, dearly like to string together uh, a couple of first downs here. The third period is winding down. There's four minutes and 27 seconds remaining. Bailey in motion. Seba's going to keep the ball. Finds a little hole and now finds lots of room. Can he turn it on? Yes, he can. Beach is going down the sidelines. This will be a touchdown. Red Tornado. I'm sorry. Seba's down the sidelines. <laughs> touchdown. Red Tornadoes. Good job by Nick Sebas. Kept the ball and right down the sideline. And that, we saw that play a couple times early in the, in the first half. We saw them set it up. Everybody was in the exact position. And that time, you didn't right. notice how far Daukus was downfield. Actually, Sebas passing Daukus as Daukus turned to see if anybody was chasing him. So uh, a big Again. touchdown for Big Red that time. Again, the key block there was Malakoski kicking the end out for Sebus to cut back behind him to get out into the flat. Number 58, Mike Sinkovic in to attempt the extra point. Snaps back from Elsta Chesney. It's down, the kick's up, and it's good. With 4.09 left in the third quarter, the score, the Red Tornadoes 24, the Colts nothing. And guys, anything happens in a football game, and I, I know that, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you listen real hard, you can hear the death knell being sounded. The Colts are dead, folks. I'm sorry I'm calling it here at the four-minute and nine-second mark of this game with their offense right now and the smothering, horrible defense that Big Red's on the field. The Red I have death. called it right here. Red death has brought the curtain down on this game. Great play that time by the Red Tornadoes. Oh. They sent Bailey out in a motion out of that cheater back formation, made it look like they might go up the middle with it, and then just brought Sebus out around the end, and uh, great play. How, how much, you know, how, how many times we've talked about that speed that Sebus has, that you get him around the corner and, and a few blocks, he's gone. Uh, it, and every time you see him, I mean, you just stand here in amazement to watch that kid run. He, he just does yep. such a great job. That was his 13th TD of the season, yep. guys. Lucky 13. Lucky there, 13. Huh? Nowitzki thought he had him. Yeah, well. <laughs> and it, it just wasn't even close. Now, once he makes that turn in full stride, it's very, very difficult to, to bring him down. Mike Sinkovich to kick off. He does that squibber kick, lets it bounce. It bounces around on the field and covered by Donati at the 18-yard line. First down and 10, Colts. Probably the biggest uh, offensive series of the game right now for the Colts. If there's any chance, if there's any lingering chance that they're going to be in this football game, right here and right now is where they're going to do it or they're not going to be in it. Beretsky is split far right for the Colts. They're going to go with Ott and Barrasso in the backfield. Tries Barrasso up the middle and gains maybe a half a yard. Dalk is in on the tackle. We couldn't see from up here who was in on it. Second down and nine. Yeah, and again, again, only one yard, and, and that's not the way they're going to win this game. First of all, I think they need to open up this offense a little bit. I don't, I don't think there's enough time to, to, to keep anybody honest or keep anybody running right now. You've got to get rolling. Barrasso back off the field and. He's obviously hurt. They had retaped the ankle, and, and he came off with a pretty heavy limp again, so I'm not sure how, more, how much more effective he'll be for the game. Matula's out here split left. They're looking at him, and then they try on out of the backfield for about a four-yard loss. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what. That whole play there, you can, you can give all the credit in the world to Chris Cuff. Chris Cuff took that lead back on that was supposed to be blocking him. Now, what the lead back was supposed to do, 32, he was supposed to hit the end and release and come back out into the flat for the pass. Well, Cuffey stayed with him the whole time and had him all tied up. 
Third down, 13, and the Colts have the ball resting right about the 14-yard line. 2.50 left in the third quarter. Split backs, and they're blocking backs is what you're looking at right now, yeah. Wayne. DeCosti, quick drop back. Gets a big rush from Evans. Intercepted, Nick Chesney at the 15-yard line. First down and 10 Red Tornadoes. Should have, should have never thrown the no. ball. He, he, well, not only could he not throw, he, he first pumped but couldn't throw because of the guy jumping up in the air that there. That was Mike Sinkovich, uh, Sinkovich. 58. And then when he finally did, he had it already telegraphed. He was only going in one spot, and it, it just wasn't the time to throw the ball. And again, that's a young quarterback there. I mean, that's a lesson he's learning. Unfortunately, he's learning it in an in a Eastern Championship, right. but something he'll remember, you know, something he'll bring with him into, into the next season. But really telegraphed it and again and worst of all I mean if you want to compound all those mistakes he threw it right at Chesney and don't put the ball in there Chesney it's just <laughs> not a good thing out of the eye ball goes to Veach off the right side finds a big hole down to the four yard line on the tackle number 33 out along with number 80 BD. first yeah, first down and goal to go. I wanted to see if he got the 11 yards. It looked like he did. First and goal to go from the four now for Big Red. Two minutes and 21 seconds remaining here in the third period of play in the Pennsylvania Eastern Finals. Here. Isn't it something, huh? For the, for the right to take that ride down to Hershey, Pennsylvania. Out of the straight eye formation again. Going to give it to Bailey, and he gets about maybe two yards. He's about at the two-yard line. Bailey on the carry, on the tackle number eight, Valiant along with number Again, Mount Carmel area stretching each play out as long as they possibly can. Oh, yeah. Comfortably it's ahead, 24 nothing. They do not need to move around much. They they punch it in here, and, and you're going to see a lot of kids start playing in an Eastern final that, that have been looking forward to doing it all their lives. There's 88. Jacobs was just in. We sort of, I don't know if uh, Bob mentioned him. Did Shell Hammer. Shell Hammer. I'm sorry, right. Shell Hammer. This is out of a power eye formation. You got Veach behind uh, Meyer and Sinkovich in a little fumble on the handoff, and he gets it to about the four-yard line. That was Harmonoski that time, 50, putting a big hit on Veach. It's going to bring up a, a uh, third down now, and still probably four. We haven't, yeah, we haven't it's, gotten, back, it's back to the four. Well, we were down to the two, but that, that was a two-yard loss. Yeah, we haven't gotten too far past that four since the beginning, so third and four now for Big Red. And again, the threat of the field goal looming. I'm sure if we, if we go in the fourth down and we haven't put it in yet, we'll see uh, the big man come on and try to put it through the upright. So Mount Carmel area again with just a wealth of offensive weapons here in this football game. Out of the power eye going right again, and you see them all moving to the right side. Seamus keeps it and cuts left. Turns it on, and he goes to the oh. corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Great call by the Red Tornadoes. Made it look like he was going right, and you could see Marion defenders, Wayne, yep. all of them just shifting left, and they brought Sebus to the corner of the end zone. And, th and that play there, great play by Sebus. And I'll tell you what, he tucked that ball right on his hip after he faked the handoff, which was a great deception. But th what they wanted, they and, and they actually got it, was that the defensive end overplayed his, his boundary because he overran Sebus and Sebus cut to the inside. Mike Sinkovich in to attempt the extra point. Snaps back from Else to Chesney. The kick's up. And He's no, no good. good. He missed that one. Extra point attempt. That even sounded a little bit funny. He hear the sound wave when that one left his foot. I'm not sure what happened there. Thir 34 seconds left in the third quarter. Score, Red Tornadoes 30. And the Colts nothing. And again, you know, we're talking here, Paracella's not in there holding the ball. And, uh, you know, it's always a little bit different, a little bit of uh, thinking going on on, on Sinkovich's part, whether Chesney's going to put the ball down in the right spot or not. So. I'm going to take a moment here to thank the, the real people who make this all possible for everybody tonight, the ones that are, that are actually doing the hard work here on Master Control tonight. We have Joe Gushin on the cameras. We have Joe Mazur, Joe D'Amico, and Ryan Devine. Uh, sort of a skeleton crew for us, but we apparently have a lot of uh, illness <laughs> floating through the crew, and, and we're missing two or three of our, of our regular ones. But uh, these guys doing absolutely yeoman work today with a, with a short-handed crew and bringing you all these pictures and these replays and all. It's really something great. And, of course, the big man, as always, George McPhee. 
who is the, the real strength behind this whole operation. Sinkovich's kick taken by Matula. Find some running room. Now he has lots of running room up this side. Chesney the last one to get him. Big hit by 50. Harmonoski and gets the ball. Chesney makes the tackle on the 48-yard line. Almost broke that one free. 22 seconds here in the third quarter, and Marion Colts will take over inside Mount Carmel area territory. Of course, at the 49-yard line that time. So renewed life here on the Colts sideline. But unfortunately, Barrasso has remained on the bench, guys. He will he will not be back in the football game, I believe, tonight. Well, I'm not sure he would have made that big of a difference, well, to be honest I, with you. <laughs> you, hate, you hate to see a guy have to leave like that. Donati takes it outside, tries cutting back. Big hit, Terry Meyer, for about a four-yard loss. Terry Meyer and Dan Dalkus took the lead blocker on and just strung it right out, giving Terry Meyer the, the, the chance to come through the hole and make the tackle. So we got face masks locked together. If you look down right in the center of the field, got a Marion player and a red tornado in there. <laughs> <laughs> so we really call bucking heads. Yeah. They took the Marion helmet off. They got them both off now. And that's that's Jeremiah. <laughs> Brown's got his. <laughs> look at they are really stuck together. Well, as they fix the helmets, it's the end of the third quarter. The score, the Red Tornadoes 30, the Colts nothing. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching WKMC-TV. They're broadcasting to you directly from the campus at Mount Carmel Area High School over a microwave signal WLX267. We are an instructional fixed television service, and you catch us every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. on Channel 13 in the service electric cable system. And, of course, we remind you, ladies and gentlemen, oh, I take one second here. We have, we have the big man out there. <laughs> he's, he's working on the helmets now. How good do you think he's going to do? Well, Coach Conley and Coach Edwards did some major work on it. Now, Coach, there we go. Coach Edwards got it. And Coach Edwards leaves, of course, with standing ovation, ladies and gentlemen, for separating the helmets. And that's why he is the man with the tools <laughs> in his pocket. But uh, getting back to WKMC TV, of course, I want to remind you that, of course, we are live at 7.30 in the morning. You want to uh, pay attention for that. Uh, you can see all the day's news and anything that's happening at Mount Carmel Area Schoolers by tuning in to Channel 13 at uh, 7.30 a.m. And you'll see some real announcers during that time, not us. And we want to uh, take one moment here to make a, say a special thank you to Joe Gushin and his family and, of course, all those at Vine Street Hoagie Shop there in Mount Carmel. Uh, of course, a fabulous meat spread for the, for the, for the crew which unfortunately I guess we probably ate the, the majority of, <laughs> which, which only learned, the, they learned a valuable lesson, don't bring food near us. But again, a big thank you to Gushin and Vine Street Hoagie for everything he's done for us tonight. DaCosti looks over the middle, fumble on the play, and recovered by Marion. Number 17 had the fumble on the play, which was uh, Radoka. Radoka. 76 recovered the ball. Radoka's right 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 had, had a heck of a time <laughs> on the, on the uh, pass catching end of this thing tonight. Third down and about eight yards to go. Good coverage for DeCosti that time, though. He had a little bit more time and got a good pass away. Here's the quote. The, the Colts have, or uh, the opponents of us over the period of this year have had 20 fumbles in the last 12. And believe it or not, we've had 21 in the last 15. DeCosti, little roll ride. Malakoski with the big chase. Now Cuff with him, and he's nailed at about the 45-yard oh. line. And Jeff Evans down, but back up. Oh, you, you kidding. Oh, no way. Uh, the, the dog heard a paw, that's all. <laughs> he was burying a bone. <laughs> that's what he was doing. I think he found a, a leg bone from Mary inside there, and he was burying it. <laughs> the dog was caught digging a hole in midfield and burying a bone. We're not sure if he's violated any, any PIAA rules, but I'm sure there'll be a full investigation. I think they're checking everybody the on the sideline on Mary inside to see if they have all their limbs yet. Punt situation for the Colts. <laughs> Number three, Matt, you know I usually don't laugh. I try to keep it serious, but Leitzel back to punt. Snaps away Zublik with the, or no, it was 40 Ziegler with the big rush. And Van Doren with the catch at the 28-yard line. Good job by Van Doren yeah, to Matt, catch that one, though. I'll tell you why. You have to tip your hat to Matt Van Doren tonight. Uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, Veach is, is not playing defense. He's not in. Paracelis hurt, so he had to bring someone else in. Van Doren, number 27, has stepped onto the side, onto the uh, field here, into the flat, and has done everything that we've asked him to do. 
Uh, he has not played a defensive down up to this point, and this mm -hmm. is the finals, the Eastern Finals. So yep. my hat off to Matt. So a big red here with 10-22 remaining in this uh, football game. I'm sure content now. You're going to oh. see some, some ground control <laughs> and grind it out uh, offense. Bailey going to try to take it outside. Gets a good block there and gets about a seven-yard gain, six-yard gain. He made a nice run out of that. I thought he was going to get hammed in there for a second, and he split the two guys and, and just uh, snuck inside of them there. Picked up a nice gain that time. 74, O'Brien in at guard now for Mike Sinkovich. Nine fifty and counting down in this Eastern final. Shellhammer also in. He split far right for the Red Tornadoes. Out of the split backs. And movement on the uh, line of the Red Tornadoes. Five yard penalty coming up for Big Red. Bring up a second and 15 now for the Red Tornadoes, and they'll be on their own 26 yard line or so. Also, we have number 50, Matt Booker, in, so both guards are yep. now in. You have Dalkus out and Mike Sinkovic out. Booker and O'Brien in. Second down, and 10. Second down, 10 yards to go for the Red Tornadoes. Sebus to Bailey. Bailey on carry. <laughs> Tackled about the 30 yard line. Again, another play there. You're looking at, at Veach as the decoy going deep for looking for a deep pitch out towards the end. And Bailey coming up through off tackle and taking the pitch. Smith it back into the lineup for Big Red. Third down, about six yards to go. Trips left for the Red Tornadoes. Bailey the lone back. Sebus, back to pass. Hits Veach, and a good play made by Matula. Matula was on Veach all the way. He had just, his responsibility was cover Veach, Wayne. Well, I'll tell you, all game long, uh, somebody's been keen on him, and, and, and that was Matula, and he, he's done an excellent, he's played his defense exactly the way he's supposed to, keen on Veach. Steve Sinkovich in the punt for the Red Tornadoes. Terry Meyer with the long snap. Snaps back. Kicks away. In the direction of Nowitzki, it bounces around and will be down by the Red Tornadoes at the 42-yard line. First down and 10, Colts with 8.14 left on the clock. Of course, we want to take a second here, uh, as we did last week, and we want to say uh, a very big thank you to the Shemokin Area School District. Of course, they could not have been nicer again this week and allowing us to, to use the facility so we can play close to home. And of course, uh, just a tribute to the people here in, in the Shemokin area. Of course, when we play them in the regular season, bitter rivals, but once the season's over, uh, they are our are, are neighbors, treat us like kings when we come down there. And again, a big thank you to Shemokin area for allowing the, the, us to use this Oh, Dukoski got Nowitzki out there wide open. He's going to the end zone and he's tackled at the 11 by Van Duren, but uh, he just broke loose uh, wide yeah, open. He got behind everybody that time. Now, this is the deepest penetration now. This is it. They're on the Mount Carmel area, 11-yard line. There's eight minutes and four seconds remaining in the game. The Colts are down 30 to nothing. This is their best shot at putting some points in the game. Dacosti puts Matula out here to the left side. They go out of power formation. Donati, big hit by number 58, Mike Sinkovich. Sinkovich all over that play. On a tackle for Mount Carmel, number 58, Mike Sinkovich. A loss of, of, of uh, just about, over a about yard. A yard. Yeah. Bring up a second down. Second down, 12 yards to go. Dukoski, straight drop, looks at the out of the backfield. Number 33 with the reception, which is Ott. Slentini and Chesney on the stop. 
long and again, it, you know, trying something quick, something short, looking for the open man very quickly. Now the Colts can get a, a first down inside the one yard line here, guys. You're right, third and eight. Yep. Yeah, it's not it's from not the goal, nine. It's not goal to goal here. Out of the eye formation, Donati at the tailback position. Nowitzki goes in motion. They're going to try that option again. Pitch to Donati, and it's about a five-yard loss. Good play made by Nick Chesney yeah, coming from his quarterback spot. He was in, actually almost in back of the pitch. <laughs> he was ready to catch it. Made, yeah. Close to an interception, believe it or not, on the pitch. My goodness, and, and a big loss that time for the Colts, and it brings up, of course, fourth down now. Ball sitting now at the Mount Carmel area, 14-yard line or so, so it brings up a fourth and 12, and again, the Colts can get a first down if they can get inside the one-yard line. Trips, well, not really. Twins right. Dacosti's going to look that way. Oh, and Malakoski with the big hit. Puts him down at the 18. First down and 10 red tornadoes. I'll tell you what, between uh, Malakoski tonight and Cuff, uh, this quarterback has had his hands full. The, the amount of pressure that, that those two, number 60 and number 80, have put on uh, the quarterback is, is unbelievable tonight. Now that, that seemed to be the, the, the signal for, for the Colts fans seated here in front of us. They are now, they've almost been masted up and started to head for the exits here with 5.59 remaining here in the, in the Eastern Finals. And of course, Mount Carmel area now a, a absolute sure bet to take that hour-long ride this time down to the, 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 uh, Chocolate sweetest, town. the sweetest town in, in the world down there, Hershey. Bailey with the ball. And stays in bounds and goes to about the 12-yard line. Flags on the play. And yeah, they were late flags, and they were off to the to the other side of the ball. So it'll be interesting what that call is going to be. I, I, it could be a face mask. I thought. Well, the guy that called it had a. Yes, it is. You're right. There it is. I thought it could be a face mask. I thought his hand got on there. But the guy that would you wow. thought would have saw it didn't, didn't even call look. It. He wasn't even watching. Yeah, it. The other guy called right. it from the far side there, but it's a face mask against the Colts, and that'll. Be a big walk off there. Mount Carmel area will have it uh, first and ten when they when they get done setting the ball down. Wait, they do have some new numbers, Wayne. That 48 came in the new white shirt, and that, that's that's not on their roster. Oh yeah, it is. Colin Checo. Yeah, Colin Checo. That's right. You, you were you were questioning me. You actually waited a minute to say. <laughs> well, I warned you in the beginning. You might have to call that name. <laughs> First down and 10 out of the I formation at the 31 yard line. 5.39 left on the clock. Flags on the play, and this one should be uh, offside, Marion. I didn't Marion, see a I red tornado move. move right nope. Gonna go against the big red. Somebody, somebody. <laughs> a good did. call by me, right? Somebody, somebody must have flinched in there. All right, we're back. Had to do a little bit of uh, technical work there. We got that out of the way. <laughs> and believe me, we say very little. We mean very little <laughs> when it comes to technical work up here. <laughs> First down, 15 yards to go for the Red Tornadoes. We have the ability to shut the electricity down to most of this state with the touch of a button right now if one of us <laughs> manages to get the right one. Out of the eye formation. Sebas keeps the ball. Does that little uh, off tackle play and gains about maybe two yards. Again, the time continues to tick away. We will be now inside the five minute mark of the fourth quarter in this game. And uh, number 70 into the football game. John Bartle. For Big Red. Bartle's now in. Yeah, you get, you're seeing some changes being made here right now on the Red Tornado line. And timeout called by the Red Tornadoes. And here you go. This you're could gonna... be the exodus here, yeah. They're getting ready to send a, a separate team, I believe, in here as Coach Williams does that slow walk out to his offense, and here it is. You'll see a standing ovation come out of the Mount Carmel area stands, and there they go, the red towels, as this offense will take the rest of the evening off and prepare itself for the game in Hershey. We, we at this time, of course, can't tell you who that will be, but who cares who it's going to be, guys? 
We're going down to that yeah. dance for the for the third time now in six years. Wow, two wins under our belts, and and uh, we start looking forward. I know the people over there that we can see all that sea of red and white <laughs> over there. They're already looking forward. They're to excited, it. aren't they? Yep. So uh, the offense takes a well-deserved bow, of course. Uh, not much you can say so far in this game. It went the way we all felt it would. Uh, we, we knew that Marion uh, had probably improved their offense a little bit, but it didn't seem like they've done it enough. The defense has been absolutely smothering and horrible to, to run against. They had the, a minus one yard at, at the half, and I'll bet they're not a whole lot better as the end of the game nears. Yesenchak gives it to Zublik. Gets about a five-yard gain. It'll be third down, nine yards to go. And Zublik, again, I like Zublik. He's yeah. a kid you like to see. I really do. Every time he touches the ball, he just runs as hard as he can. And uh, he's just hes just fun to watch. He really is. He's a kid you want to keep your eye on. We're waiting to see whether Marion will, will substitute some kids into their lineup, of course, with the four-minute and 20-second mark. There's no reason not to. I mean, it's 30 to nothing. You're not going to win the game. Uh, you hope some of these kids get a shot at, at playing in an Eastern final is all you can hope for right now. Sanchak pitches back to Zublik, tries to take it outside, Ooh. and <laughs> he's, he's hit for about, oh, maybe a six-yard loss. And he's hit so by about eight different guys there as he went down, too. Fourth and down. Uh, 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 guys, was I prolific or what? There you have it. Uh, Coach Dukoski is, is sending in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven new people. Of course, and, uh, it's on a punt return, but there's some new uniforms floating around in there now for the for Marion Catholic. And then these kids have, have played their heart out, guys. We don't want to take anything away from them. Just overmatched is simply the way the way it has to be here. Steve Sinkovich with the punt. Fair catch called for by Matula. He lets it bounce, and it'll be down on about the 36-yard line. <laughs> Yeah, but he, he's still going with his yeah, first when he, team when offense. He went, when he went offense, he has very few clean yeah, well, uniforms in there. So. We'll see what happens here. So uh, they're, they're trying Coach, to score Conley, Coach Conley picked up on that real quick, though, if you yeah, look. They're trying to score points, and uh, really, really now is a shot to give some kids a chance to play. You know, in, in an Eastern final, It's some, for, the, for the seniors, it's a once-in-a-lifetime shot for them. So you would like to see them play, obviously, the game out of reach. The, putting a touchdown on the board right now is absolutely meaningless to anyone. The Costi, back to pass. Big rush on. Hits Nowitzki at the 42. First down, Colts. For three minutes and seven seconds now remaining in the football game. Clock is running. And Mount Carmel area is called, they were calling a timeout. They, were, they either didn't have enough people on the field or were no somewhat defense, confused yeah. there defensively. So we call a timeout. And Coach, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're going to, we're bringing everybody off the field here. Standing ovation for the defense now. And again, that's a standard yeah. procedure for Coach Williams. He does enjoy that. And of course, Coach Connolly is the guy that, that, that brings him off the field there on this one. And that's what you like to see, the defensive coordinator for Big Red. Uh, I, I don't think we, we can say enough. Uh, we don't say enough. Obviously, we don't say enough about all the coaches in, in, on the coaching staff. Uh, it's, it's really a team effort here at Mount Carmel area. Everybody has input. Every, everybody has something to say. And there, ladies and gentlemen, if, if the, I'm not sure where we are. If we can get the camera over there, you have it. You're seeing the Hershey Kisses balloons going yeah. up in the air <laughs> to signify that Mount Carmel area will be traveling to Hershey for the state final game. And uh, the cheerleaders are, are over there dancing around, and then some of the balloons have been let loose. So Mount Carmel area is celebrating an Eastern state final championship. And the fans are just having a good time and making some hay over there in the stands. DeCosti is going to look on a fade pass. Oh, great play. Intercepted, Intercepted oh. by number 81 <laughs> of the Red Tornadoes, Ryan Miller. All right, Ryan Stan Miller. Stan the coach, was trying to put points on the board and give that second team a great effort there. Oh, Intercepted, what a, Ryan Miller. What Marion with an entire new defense in there. In fact, they were short a guy there. He just kind of trots onto the field there. But here comes Zublik. Up to the 22-yard line, close to a first down. Yeah, I mean, I, I've never really understood that 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 thought that you need to get some points on the board. It doesn't really matter one way or the other. The real the real thought here is that most of these kids you see out there now are going to be back next year. 
you get him some experience, you get him to play in a big time situation like this is. And that's really and that's really what Mount Carmel area remember. strengths are. You know, right. that we've always done that. Coach Williams always puts people into the football game. Uh, I don't have to say it, that everyone over there has been in the football game. You know, I mean, we're playing everybody in an Eastern final, so that's what you like to see. Tries Mike Powell, gets the first down. Good job by the fullback, number 10, Mike Powell. Tough run that time by Powell. He really was. He was bottled up. He would have lost the yard, but he twisted free there and came up with the first down. Yeah, you wish you could keep up with the numbers. Now, they didn't give him like the first every, down. Every play oh, looked like a first down to me. He was over the line. I don't, I'm not sure how they managed to put the ball where they did. I'd have to really, I'd have to really question Sorry, that right? placement. Oh, that's okay. No, I'm saying it's so difficult to keep up with the, the numbers and the names because after every play, there's four new people going in off the sideline. Third down and inches for the Red Tornadoes. They try the quarterback sneak, and Yasenchek looked like he was close. Well, you had a, if you look at where that is, he has to get right, um, well, that's a first down, where he places uh, it down. He's bringing it back. They're bringing it back. That's not a first down. That's not a first down. I don't understand uh, where the placement of that is all the time. I thought for sure he was over the line. No, definitely that, you have to admit, on a quarterback uh, sneak like that, that is a judgment call on where they're going to yeah. place that ball. Minute and 11 seconds remaining in the football game, ladies and gentlemen, and Mount Carmel area on a fourth and one will go for it. The ball sitting on their 25-yard line. You said quarterback, Jack, quarterback, sneak quarterback sneak again. Sneak. This time it's first, a first down, down for about a three-yard gain behind Swaldy. 76 and 56 into the into the football game for Big Red. You got uh, Uber in there, and 56 is uh, Wayne Grinovich into the football game for Mount Carmel area. And we got a, a bunch more coming in there. 85 coming in. Uh, Justin, Justin Dillo into the into the lineup for Big Red. Paul Hubler, 76 is in. 44 seconds remaining, folks. I will count this baby down for you as we uh, bring this thing to a close. Mike Powell, at fullback with the ball that time. 32 seconds remaining. There will be time for one more play, I believe. Uh, Coach Williams wants one more play because he's sending in a whole different group of players that we're never going to get everybody in there. 55, Dave Shoppy. 64, Sean Thomas. You got Ziegler popped back into, into the, the game there. So, uh, Coach Williams, absolutely everybody getting in there and getting a, a, a uniform dirty here in the final nine, eight, seven, six, four, three, two, one. That's it, ladies and gentlemen, from Shemokin, Pennsylvania, where the Mount Carmel area Red Tornadoes have claimed the Pennsylvania Eastern title and will march to Hershey for the state championship game next Saturday, 12 noon at Hershey Stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, absolutely dominating performance by Mount Carmel area tonight. A 30 to nothing win, Wayne. Defense was was just as as, as tough and, and tenacious and, and unforgiving as they always have been. The offense, probably not as explosive no. as we had seen last You're week, right. but, but put 30 points on the board, so did something there tonight, didn't they? Well, I'll tell you what, you talk about the red death. These guys are red death. You look at the amount of speed that they bring on the field defensively, let alone talking about the offense with, with Sebus and Veach and, and Bailey back there. But defensively, it's just amazing to see the size of our defensive line with uh, Sinkovich out there, with Jeff Evans out there, with Malakoski, with Cuff and with Dalkas. And these guys are running the halfbacks down. They're running on, on sweeps and, and student bodies right and student bodies left and, and the quarterback. Yeah, but it really, really was, a, was a, a team performance again as we've seen all season long. And of course, uh, got to be proud of every single player on the team. I mean, really, we, we, we saw Paracetal leave the game early, so we, we lose our leading receiver and don't miss a beat. Uh, we saw Veach get dinged a little bit there. Well, probably wasn't playing at 100% for the rest of the game right. after that. He got dinged, sort of looked like uh, Jeff Evans. He, he sort of had a hit yep. pointer or something yep. to matter there. Uh, but, you know, played an, an excellent game. Yep. You know, I mean, what, what more can we say? We've got we to gotta tell everybody, of course, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last game you'll see us this season. Mount Carmel area cannot broadcast a state championship game. That is on PCN, the channel PCN. I believe it's 58 on your 58. dial. 12 noon next week in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Mount Carmel area will go for its third, uh, or third Pennsylvania title in six years. 
and uh, we're looking forward to it. We want to remind everybody, pay attention to the newspapers in the coming months. WKMC-TV will be broadcasting basketball, both boys and girls, wrestling, and all types of other events as we go through the holiday season and into the, into the winter sporting season. So pay attention to, to WKMC-TV. We're going to be out there. We're going we're to try to get as much sports as we can as usual for the season. We want to thank everyone involved with this operation, Wayne, from start to finish, all 14 games. Many people were very good to us yes, over, the, over the period of season. We, we can't uh, name everybody. Uh, obviously, for, for just statistical reasons, it would, be, it would take forever. But we want to thank the community for everything they do, all the unseen things that people have managed to do in the season. One last thank you to Shemokin area for hosting two games. Once again, making it easy for our fans to see playoff football very close to home and giving us almost a home field advantage, the way we're treated down here and the way that people uh, take to us down here. So a big thank you to them. Bob Else, of course, down on the field with his son, saying congratulations to the big man for, for a job well done. We will say good night. We will say thank you. And this is Warren Altimore for Bob Else. Wayne Brokenshire. Good night.